see here. Hmm. Ah. What a great day to be on the open ocean. Ah. Let me see if we have everything here. Let's see. Uh, main deck. Yep, check. Ocean. Yep, check. Aft sail. No aft sail. Oh, I didn't see you there. Uh, passengers, check. All right, thank you. Oh, hello, wonderful. Well, I'm glad I got all that straight. I'm Captain Sailor, and this is my ship, the VBS Mercy. We're gonna have a great time this week on the ship. Now, the most important thing you have to be aware of on a ship are storms. Storms can be really scary, but there's one thing that I do when I'm in a storm. Do you know what that is? Yeah, the boat. The boat? Yeah. You know, when I'm in a storm, I read God's word, because God is bigger than any storm, and I can trust him. So I'd like to teach you some of the verses that I use when I'm in a storm. I'm going to teach you this one tonight. Look at this, Psalm 89.1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. That's pretty good. You can rely on the Lord forever, his mercies. Can you say this with me? Let's say it. Let's say the verse and the reference and then the verse. Ready? Psalm 89.1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. That's really good, but I think you could do a little louder. The ocean is pretty loud, so you gotta be louder than that. Let's try it again. Psalm 89, one. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Now that's really good. Now there is someone else I want you to meet. Let's see. Salty! Salty, where are you? So, oh. Did I hear my name? <laughs> oh, yeah, Salty. I want you to meet some friends of mine. They've got sailors out there. How long have you been living on the VBS Mercy? Oh, a long time. I live all the way up in the crow's nest. You're not a crow, are you? Ah, of course not. I'm a parrot. But I kicked that old crow out as soon as I joined this ship's crew but everyone keeps calling my home the crow's nest. Well, what do you do on the VBS Mercy? Do you have a job? Of course. Everyone on the ship has a job. Yeah. This isn't a pleasure cruise, you know. I know, but what do you do? Hmm, I'm the lookout. I keep a sharp eye out for all sorts of things. Do you say lookout? Yes, I say I have the best view up there in the crow's nest of anyone in the ship. Sometimes I watch for land. If I spot land, I shout, land ho! I guess that's the same as saying, look out! <laughs> if I see a sailor fall overboard, I shout, man overboard! Yeah, you probably should have said, look out. <laughs> if I see a pirate ship, if I see a pirate ship heading out our way, I shout, I'm getting out of here! Yeah, I, I can see that. There is one other thing I do when I'm way up there in the crow's nest. What's that? I sing! Uh, would you like sure. to hear me? Yeah, I would. Me, 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 me! That's just the warm-up. Listen. Yo-ho! Blow the van down! Okay, quick, okay. That, that's quite enough. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. huh? I've been practicing that for a long time. Now keep practicing. <laughs> You know, singing reminds me of our Bible verse for today. It talks about singing. Really? I'd love to hear that. You know what? We're going to say it for you. You ready? Let's say it for Salty. Ready? Psalm 89.1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. That's great. The, Bi the Bible tells us that our God is a loving and merciful God. What is mercy? Well, when God has mercy, it means that he does not give us what we deserve. What do we deserve? Well, the Bible says that we are all born sinners. We all deserve to be punished for our sin. 
But because God is merciful, he made a way for our sins to be forgiven. Jesus Christ came to earth for our, to be our punishment for our sin when he died on the cross. That's great. It sure is. God's mercy is so great that it makes us want to sing with joy. That's why the verse says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. It's an easy verse. You think you can say it for us? Oh, sure. Do you want me to sing it for you? No, no, please don't sing it. Just say it like the sailors did. No singing. Well, you don't, don't want to strain your voice or anything. True. Okay. Here goes. Psalm 89, 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Great job. I'd better fly up to the crow's nest now. I need to practice my singing some more. Yeah, good idea. You need all the practice you can get. Goodbye, mates. Yo-ho, blow the man down. Oh, that's enough. Thanks, Salty. How are you guys doing? Did you have fun at your game time? Did you? I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe you did it. Did you? All right. I am so glad to be here at Bible school this week. Unfortunately, this is going to be my only night to be able to be with you. But I am glad to be here, and I hope that you are glad as well to be here this week. You know, this week we are going to learn all about Jonah. When you think of Jonah, what do you think of? What? A big fish. That's right. A huge fish. Well, could be a whale, could just a big fish. But you know what? But you know what? There's more to the story of Jonah. And that's what we're going to talk about this week. So I hope that your ears are open, your mind is open, and your mouth is closed. Okay? So that way you listen and you learn about Jonah. Because we're going to tell you a whole bunch of neat stuff that I hope that you remember about Jonah. Jonah was a prophet. If you go to your Old Testament, there's a book named Jonah. A whole book. And that's what we're going to study this week. Now, Jonah chapter 1 and verse number 1, the Bible says this. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, so the book begins by saying, God spoke to Jonah. He was a prophet. You know what prophets did? They would go to the people and they would deliver messages from God to the people that God wanted the people to do. Maybe they were uh, wicked and sinning and the po a prophet would go to the people and deliver that message from God. He was like a preacher or maybe a Sunday school teacher that was giving messages to people all throughout Israel. And he wanted to convince the people to listen to God and obey God. So as you start Jonah chapter 1, verse number 1, it says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Verse 2 says this. This is God speaking. He says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. So Jonah gets this message, a pretty strange message from God. As God told Jonah to go and cry against evil in the city of Nineveh. And you look at that message and you think, well, you know what, that's not really a strange message. But 
But as you think about it and understand it, it was a very strange message. Because he was to go to a city named Nineveh. You know what? The Ninevites and the Israelites did not get along. The Israelites hated the Ninevites. And the Ninevites hated the Israelites. And you would say, well, why would God go tell Jonah to go to a city that his people don't even like? How would you feel? I don't want to go there. But you know what Jonah did? Jonah got up, and instead of going to Nineveh, Jonah decided to go in a different direction. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But I really want us to understand something. Because Nineveh was not a city in, in Israel. They were enemies of Israel. And even Nineveh was not even God's people. So why did God tell Jonah to go to Nineveh? Why did God tell Jonah to go and preach to these heathen people that nobody liked? You know why? It's because of God's mercy. And that's what we're talking about this week. God is merciful. I know you know this verse. John 3.16. That Bible says... For God so loved the world, that means everybody in the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That word whosoever means anybody. doesn't matter who you are. God wants to show mercy to you because God is a merciful God. That's what the book of Jonah is about. God's mercy. God wanted to show that God intended that salvation would be open for all people. Jesus is going to come into the world. Jesus hadn't come into the world yet. He was going to come into the world to die upon Calvary's cross to provide salvation for everyone. What mercy, like I told you, is, the word mercy means it's undeserved favor from God. And God was willing to show mercy on the wicked, on the heathen, on, on everybody. And that's why God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh to give that message and to cry against their wickedness. So again, Jonah gets his orders from God. And he got up, and he headed in the opposite direction. Now, wait a minute. Why did Jonah go in the opposite direction? He did not want to go to Nineveh because Nineveh caused great trouble for Israel. And Nineveh was an enemy of Israel. And he didn't want to help them. And I'm sure that when God gave him that message, he was probably saying in his mind, Nah, I'm not going there. So Jonah gets up, and he goes. Now, I want to show you this. Nineveh, here's, here's where Joppa is. That's where, that's where Jonah is. He's right by the sea. God tells him to go to Nineveh, which is about 500 miles from Joppa. That's probably a, a good, good trip for Jonah to go. Instead, Jonah gets on a boat here in Joppa and heads all the way over here to Spain. You know how many miles that is? Two thousand, almost 2,500 miles. It's like, okay, we're going to go to New York City. And instead of going to New York City, we go out to Los Angeles, California. 
the opposite direction. And that's what Jonah does. Instead of obeying God, instead of going to tell those people to repent of their sins, he goes in the opposite direction, and he runs, to, runs from God. You know what? That's pretty silly. And we think about that. You know what? We do the very same thing. Whenever your mom and dad tell you to do something, and you say, nope, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do something else. That's the same thing that Jonah did. Jonah just did it on a bigger scale of running away from God and going as far away as he possibly could, could go where God wanted him to go. But we do the same thing. We try to run away from God. But I want you to notice as you continue to read this, in verse number 4, it says this. Verse 3 says, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, went down to Joppa, he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof, went down unto it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But, verse 4 says, the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like, be, like to be broken. Let's just think about this. You get on a ship, a wooden ship, okay, and all of a sudden you're out in the middle of the ocean, and all of a sudden a storm comes up. All of a sudden, you're just real there, nice and going on the sea, and then all of a sudden, the winds start blowing. Instead of going nice and smoothly, all of a sudden, you're going up and down from wave down to the bottom. You're rocking. The boat's going like this. The sailors on that ship were afraid. They thought their ship was going to break in two. They thought, something's going on here. What happened? When we left the port, it was real nice. And those mariners were very afraid. Verse 5 says, Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship of the sea to lighten it. Here they're thinking, you know what? If we get this ship really light, it won't break apart. So they start taking their boxes of food and they throw it overboard. They start taking all the wares that they had. Maybe they, were, they, were, uh, they had uh, dishes or, or stuff like that that they were carrying, the Tarshish. And they threw it all overboard thinking, well, if we make the ship lighter, it'll be fine. We'll be okay out here in the sea. But you know what? It wasn't. It's the... the, the, the Winds blew. And in verse number five, we have that word but. It says, but Jonah had gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay fast asleep. What's Jonah doing? He goes down to the bottom of the boat. He finds a little corner, and he goes to sleep. I don't know about you, but when I'm at my house, and there's a big thunderstorm going on, and there's the wind going on outside, and the, wind, and the rain is pounding against the windows, you know what? I can't sleep. I just can't sleep. There's too much noise there. And then put into the thing, all of a sudden you're going up and down these waves in this boat. He's probably in the corner of the boat, and all of a sudden he goes way up in the air, the, the front end of the boat goes, he slides down the other side of the boat. How could he sleep? The Bible tells us that Jonah's there sleeping away, fast asleep. You know why? Because Jonah thought he could hide from God. He thought, well, you know what? I'm down here at the bottom of this boat. I can be safe. I can I be away from God. God can't see me, can't hear me. He doesn't know I'm here. But you know what? That is wrong thinking. You know why? Because God sees me 
all the time. And he sees everybody at once. That's right. He sees us. He knows us. We cannot hide from God. And Jonah here is being pretty silly trying to hide from God in this boat. You know what the sailors do? The sailors come down to Jonah and say, Jonah, wake up! Why are you sleeping? You should be praying to your God to help us. Somehow, God is angry. And he sent this storm. And we need help. So you know what Jonah does? Jonah wakes up. He he is, in verse number 6, the shipmaster comes to him and says, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come, let us cast lots. So all the mariners come all together. They get maybe uh, sticks out. And one of those sticks is smaller than the rest of the sticks. And everybody picks one of them to find out who's the cause of the storm. And guess what? Jonah picks the smallest stick. And they said, Jonah, are you the cause of this storm that we're in? That we're going to perish and die here? And what happens is Jonah confesses. And he says to them, in verse number 8, Then they said to them, Tell us, we pray, of whose cause this evil is upon us. And in verse 9 it says, and the Bible says, And Jonah said unto them, I am the Hebrew, I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which thou hast made, the sea and the dry land. And then the men were exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he told them. Jonah confesses there that he's the cause of this big storm. He's the reason why God sent this storm that almost killed them and broke their ship apart. Can you imagine the sailors looking at Jonah when when they hear that Jonah's the cause of this, all this problem that they had? And as you continue to read in chapter number one, you find you find out that they decide, or Jonah decides, you know what? The only thing that's going to help us is if you throw me overboard. That's the only thing. That's what's going to save. And you know what the men do? They throw Jonah overboard. Verse number 11, it says, And they said unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempest. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me from forth into the sea, so that the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake... This great tempest is upon you. And again, they didn't think so. The Bible tells us that they threw all the other stuff out first. They finally cast him forth in verse number 15. It says, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. Immediately, what happens is this sea is now calm. As Jonah is now overboard in the sea, the men are safe, and God takes care of them as he throws them, as they threw Jonah into the sea. Here's what I want us to really understand. I want us to understand two things tonight. First of all, that God is merciful. He is a God that is overflowing in mercy. He could have said to the Ninevites, you know what? You can sin. 
I'll destroy you. But he didn't do that. He wanted to send a prophet, Jonah, to give them the gospel. No one can run from God. And Jonah was running from God. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 24 says, Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, Do not I fill heaven and earth? Saith the Lord. Let me remind you that not only God is merciful, but God sees you. You cannot hide from God. You cannot ever hide from God. And even though many oftentimes when we do things that are wrong, I can still go to God because God is merciful and he will forgive me of my sins and he will make me whole. That's our God, young people. That's who God is. God created you, and God created me. And because God created us, he loves us and cares for us. And he doesn't want us to perish. That's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ into the world, so that we can be forgiven of our sins. Because the Bible tells us that we're all sinners And we cannot get rid of our sins by ourselves. You know what? I can go to church. I can learn all the verses in Sunday school and in church. And even in Bible school this week, you can learn all the verses. You can be very obedient to your parents always. But you know what? The Bible says we're still sinners, and we need God's mercy. And God is merciful in sending his son to die on Calvary's cross for you and for me. And all I have to do is accept it. You know what, kids? Bible school is very, very important. You know what? Fifty years ago, I attended a Bible school at our church. That's a long time ago. And you know what, back then, we had Bible school for two solid weeks. Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday. So two weeks, it was the end of the second week of Bible school. I listened, and I heard that Jesus loved me, and that Jesus wanted to save me. And one night in Bible school, Towards the end of the second week, I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior because God was merciful to me in even getting me to Bible school every every night. That's our God. And I hope and pray this week, as you go through this week, that you will run to God, not run away from God. And when sin presents itself, instead of running away, going in the opposite direction, you go in the right direction. Jonah didn't do that. But God was merciful in saving Jonah. And you're going to learn this week that God was even merciful in saving the people of Nineveh because of Jonah giving the message of salvation. And here's the big question that we need to ask ourselves. Do I know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior? And am I saved? Am I running, or am I running from God? I trust that you're not running from God at all. It's had every, eye, every head bowed and every eye closed and nobody looking around. Jonah was a man... It was a prophet. 
and was given a great message from God to deliver to a people that needed that message. Instead of obeying God, he decided to run away from God. My prayer tonight is for you that you would not run from God. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you might trust him. He died for you. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, he died for you. And he wants to save you. That's why you're even here tonight. So you can hear the message that God wants you to hear. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I'm going to ask Pastor to come up. He's going to close this time this evening. God loves you, and he wants you to be his child. Thank you, Mr. Bob. You can look up now. And uh, I don't know what you think about the Bible, but I'll tell you, some people love the Bible and some people laugh at the Bible. Did you know that? Now, I love the Bible. A lot of people love the Bible. Some people laugh at the Bible. And one of the things that they really like to laugh at in the Bible is what God says that our brother was just talking about. Some people say, how could a big fish, you'll hear about this in the next couple of days, how could a big fish swallow a guy and the guy get out and still live? But I wanted to share something with you. Listen to this verse. This is in the book of Matthew because you get to choose whether you will believe that Jonah was real and the big fish was real and that God was merciful and delivered him. But I wanted to let you know that Jesus believed in Jonah and the big fish. Did you know that? Listen to this verse. Jesus said, this is in Matthew chapter 12, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus believed that Jonah was real and that the big fish was real. The amazing thing about this, we saw before with this slide, so here you've got Jonah being thrown overboard. What would normally happen when someone was thrown overboard in the ocean? They'd drown. Why didn't Jonah drown? Because God prepared a fish, the right fish at the right time in the exactly right place, and Jonah was swallowed by that fish and then spit up on dry land. That's how good God is. You believe that? But that's not all that Jesus said. He said just like Jonah was in the fish's belly for three days and three nights, he said the Son of Man will be buried for three days and three nights. That's what Jesus did. And he did that for you. And he did that for me. When I was 18 years old, less like Brother Bob talked about getting saved, when I was 18 years old, I heard the gospel for the first time. And I didn't get saved right then, but I did get saved some months later. And then God worked in my life and changed me and made me into a, a better person than I was. So here's the question tonight, just what our brother was saying. If you were to die today, and I hope you don't, but if you were to die today, where would you go? You'll go somewhere. We want you to go to heaven. Jesus died so you'd go to heaven. So this week, you can talk to your teachers. You can talk to me. We're here for you because we love you. And we would love to be able to show you from the Bible how you can trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. We have literature. We've got Bibles. And we want you to know. But I'll tell you, if you leave here and you never trust Jesus as your Savior... You're in deep trouble. You're worse than being in the ocean. You're worse than being thrown overboard. You don't want to just forget that. That's why we're here. So all these different songs, all these scriptures that you'll learn, we want you to know Jesus as your Savior. Let's bow our heads together and we'll pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for Jonah. Thank you for Nineveh. Thank you for the fact that you... Help those people to repent. And if these boys and girls have not trusted you as their Savior, I pray that you'd help them to change their minds, to repent, and put their faith in Jesus Christ.
So give us wisdom as we love them, care for them, help our teachers, and may your word take root in each life for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are going to have some review time, and uh, Mrs. Jennifer is going to come and do uh, go over the verses, I think, or songs, or whatever she'd like to do. Let's just say our verse one more time real quick. Do you remember what it was? Psalm 89, 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. That's a good one. See, people still, they're saying, I will sing. Do you know that song? I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Do you know that one? Yeah. Who knows it? Raise your hand. Oh, that's a good one. Maybe, maybe before the week's over, we may have to sing that. Okay, so we have a new song that you haven't done before. And this one, you'll learn really fast because it's really good. It's called Together We'll Serve the Lord. We're just going to sing it, see how it goes like this. If we take your faith and my faith and put them all together, then our faith will better serve the Lord. And let's take your prayers and my prayers and put them all together, for our prayers will better than be heard. So you do your part and I'll do my part, then the Lord will work in every heart. So let's take your faith and my faith then your prayers and my prayers together will serve the Lord. That was fun. Let's do it again because I like that one. And we're going to do it a little bit even faster than that, which it seemed fast, but it's going to be even faster. If we take your faith and my faith and put them all together, then our faith will better serve the Lord. And let's take your prayers and my prayers and put them all together for our prayers surely then be heard so you do your part and I'll do my part then the Lord will work in every heart so let's your faith with my faith and your prayers with my prayers together we'll serve the Lord okay I like that one now we have another song that's called let's make sure you get this right here. Do you know my Jesus? And we're only going to sing one verse of this tonight, but there are actually three verses to this song. Okay. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my Lord? Do you read your Bible and believe God's word? Does the Holy Spirit all your life control? Let's do it again. That was good. Why don't you stand up and do it this time? Stand up. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my Lord? Do you read your Bible and believe God's word? Does the Holy Spirit all your life control? Do you know my Jesus? Has he made Okay, and one more tonight, and then we might even review another one because we've got extra time. This is great. It's called Can't Wait. This one's great. This one has clapping, so you have to follow me to see if you can figure out where to clap. Stay standing up, okay? You ready? I'm going to heaven. Can't wait. Going to see Jesus, can't wait. Heaven is wonderful, bright and fair. Praise the Lord, I'm going there. I'll be there forever. Can't wait, gonna leave never. Can't wait, and I know I'll not be late. I'm going to heaven and I can't wait. I'm going to heaven and can't wait at the end. You actually get to yell. I'm giving you permission to yell. Okay, so now we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it faster. So get your claps ready. I'm going to heaven. Can't wait. Going to see Jesus. Can't wait. Heaven.
Heaven is wonderful, bright and fair. Praise the Lord, I'm going there. I'll be there forever. Can't wait, gonna leave never. Can't wait, and I know I'll not be late. I'm going to heaven and I can't wait. Wait, I'm going to heaven and I yell that louder. All right, ready? We're going to do the last little part. We're going to do the, I'm going to heaven and I can't wait. That last part. Ready? I'm going to heaven and I can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. Woo. Okay, that was better. <laughs> that was good. All right. So let's see. Do we have time? Do we have time? Yes. Let's go back and do, let's do, let's Yep. Let's do a simple offering, the one we started with. Now remember, which one's going to come first? Everything or anything? Anything. Anything. Why? Because it starts with a what? Because it starts with an A. Right? Okay, here it comes. Get ready. Help me get Jonah one too. We still got time. I just can't believe this. Don't we? Because it's 35, right? Oh, am I right or am I wrong? Oh yes, I'm right. Okay, one more. Let's do Jonah too. You know why I'm switching them down here? Because I can see the words down here. Because <laughs> I don't know all the words. Okay, you'd better do it. Get ready. God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh, that old wicked town. But Jonah didn't want to go where he was sent. Until that big fish came along and told Jonah he was wrong. And after that ordeal, he changed his mind and went. When God tells you what to do, you better do it. You better do it. You better do it. It doesn't pay to disobey. That's all there's to it. I don't know the words. <laughs> That's why I need words in front of me. I'm going to do it tomorrow. All right. Well, I think we could almost learn one more verse to that. So look right here. Here is the second verse. Get ready. The words are, Jonah thought he'd fool the Lord. He found a ship and got on board. Away they went, a sailing out upon the sea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, the sea waves roared. The men threw Jonah overboard, and then he knew he wasn't where he ought to be. Isn't that funny? It sounds just like what Mr. Eshelman was talking about tonight, right? So, so let's sing that part. Ready? Jonah thought he'd fool the Lord. He found a ship and got on board. Away they went, a sailing out upon the sea. After a while, the sea waves roared the men through Jonah overboard, and then he knew he wasn't where he ought to be. When God tells you what to do, you better do it. You better do it. You better do it. It doesn't pay to disobey. That's all there's to it. Like old Jonah, you'll find out the hard, hard way. Okay, we're going to go back to the very beginning. And we're going to sing it even faster because all these songs, if you've listened on the ones from the VBS thing online, they go way faster, right? So we're going to speed it up. God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh, that old wicked town, but Jonah didn't want to go where he was sent. 
Until that big fish came along to show old Jonah he was wrong. And after that ordeal, he changed his mind and went. When God tells you what to do, you better do it. You better do it. You better do it. It doesn't pay to disobey. That's all there's to it. Like old Jonah, you'll find out the hard, hard way. Jonah thought he'd fool the Lord. He found a ship and got on board. Away they went. you what to do you better do it you better do it you better do it it doesn't pay to disobey that's all there's to it like old jonah you'll find out the hard hard way good job that was great you can sit down go ahead <laughs> okay i think the next thing on here is class time so i don't know do you want me to dismiss them to class or are you uh, what are we to Okay, so this row right here can be dismissed to go to their classes. Yay, Miss Natalie. Mrs. Silos. <laughs> okay, so now the next row, that's grades one through three, right? Is that right? Okay. 